So it's been a few months since my last devlog on my FPS sci-fi game. In my previous video you'll see I worked on a different side project outside my full-time job where I remade the classic original Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy Color but in 3D using the Unity engine. I recommend you check that out if you haven't seen it already. That project took a lot out of me guys and with things getting quite busy in work in May and June I didn't have as much time as I would have liked to continue work on my FPS project. That said, I did manage to make some good progress over the last two months with all things considered. Before we begin guys, YouTube tells me like a lot of you who watch my content aren't actually subscribed to the channel, so if you do enjoy the videos I'd greatly appreciate it if you left a like and subscribed with notifications on so you can see when my next video comes out. Also if you have any comments or feedback for me, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. Since the last video I added a simple save system using XML for saving and loading player data such as position, health, experience as well as level data such as the current scene that we're in. In the future we will be expanding this out to include different things like abilities but as a foundation I find that it works quite well. I've also since added some simple post processing effects which has introduced some liveliness to the game which I felt was much needed. I still feel that more colour is needed and will be revisiting this in the future. I also spent a bit of time on optimization because I've literally done nothing so far and I don't even know what a typical optimization process looks like. I do know that adding LODs to my level could be a good start since my game was already chugging a lot so that's what I did. For those of you who don't know LOD stands for level of detail and that basically determines what assets get swapped in and out depending on the distance that the player moves away from a particular object and that's the simplest way I can explain it. With the final stage being the culling stage where the object doesn't render in the scene, with my very little knowledge in performance and optimization, I could immediately see an improvement in the smoothness of the game running. And I'm well aware I still have a lot of work to do with improving the performance and optimization because the game could be a lot lot more smooth and I still have a lot more LODs to add, levels to arrange and as well as raw code that I just need to improve so that the game runs a lot more fluidly. Now the biggest and most fun part of the progress I made on this game was adding a new gameplay mechanic. I've always wanted to add a boomerang to any game I make and with the last update we worked on being all about dismemberment of robots I thought the boomerang would supplement this quite nicely. Some of my favourite boomerang mechanics that I have fond memories of is from the forgotten and underrated Dark Sector as well as the Gale boomerang from Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. I remember how fun it was just throwing the glaive in Dark Sector and catching it, let alone all the gameplay mechanics Digital Extremes added with dismemberment and puzzle song. Similarly the Gale boomerang added elemental gameplay mechanics with the ability to control gusts of wind to solve puzzles for example. I used Blender to make the boomerang after thinking about and trying different designs and I used reference images from different websites like Arts station to stimulate my mind with different ideas. Here are some of the iterations I went through before I got to the final look. I also used this opportunity to update the textures for the player arms as well as the handgun animations and positioning. I had received some feedback on reddit that the gun positioning was not on par with typical FPS games and I completely agree. I also switched from having the player hold the gun with two hands to one and I'm quite happy with the end result. I also added animations for the boomerang throw, idle state, locomotion and catch. Additionally I added an extra switch animation when the player switches between the gun and the boomerang to add some style and uniqueness to the weapon. 
Once the boomerang and updated character were ready, I imported everything into Unity. Now all I had to do was delete the old player character and set everything up again for a new player controller. Now at first, this did feel a bit daunting, but apart from a few changes I had to make to the weapon order and structure, it actually didn't take too long to set everything up again simply copying and pasting the current scripts onto the player character. I then added all the animations and parameters that I needed for the boomerang. Moving forward, I have a nice structure for adding new weapons to the game where I can simply use game object set active and set the weapon object to true or false via the weapon switch script. Each weapon then has a separate weapon script which uses enums effectively to define the weapon and how it will behave. That said, the boomerang needed to operate a bit differently to a typical handgun or assault rifle. For example, it didn't have a fire rate or reload ability, so I thought it made sense that we use the weapon script as a starting point to identify the weapon, and then pass off the core logic of the boomerang to a new script. That was the first step in getting the boomerang behavior set up. From the outset, I knew how I wanted the boomerang to behave. I wanted the ability to throw the boomerang using something like rigidbody.addForce, and then have a curved return of the boomerang like you would expect. I wasn't quite sure how to exactly achieve that effect, however. Thankfully, I came across two videos that really helped me achieve my goal. The first person I want to shout out is Mix and Jam. I came across a video where they recreated Kratos' axe throw using rigidbody.addForce to throw the axe, and something called a Bezier curve, which basically takes three points and T for time to move an object from a starting point to an end point with effectively an anchor point called a curve point that causes the bend in the return of the object. That's the best I can do in explaining the process because really I haven't a clue what I'm talking about. That brings me to my next shoutout. If you want to learn more on the Bezier curve, check out Omar's video where he goes through the full process and equation for actually calculating the movement using Bezier's quadratic equation. He also has a link to the article where you can read up and learn more about it. So in a nutshell, I set up the boomerang to work as follows. We have three core methods in our boomerang script. The boomerang throw method is called via an animation event, which I added at the point in our throw animation where the boomerang is being released by the player's hand. This will do a few things. It sets the rigid body is kinematic on the boomerang to false so it can be affected by the physics engine outside of the code. It adds force using force mode.impulse, which basically adds an impulse amount of force on the object. It unparents the boomerang from the hand and adds some rotation to the boomerang so it looks more realistic. So we were finally halfway through our journey with throwing the boomerang. Now we just need it to behave like a boomerang and automatically return to the player. And that is our next challenge. Unlike Kratos' axe which used user input to trigger a return of the axe, I wanted my boomerang to automatically return to the player. I achieved this by calculating the distance between the player's hand and boomerang at any given time using vector3.distance. If the boomerang passed a certain point which we set using a serialized field, this would trigger the return of the boomerang. And it is here where we used Bezier's quadratic equation to return the boomerang back to the player. Player. We grab the position of the boomerang at the point past our max boomerang distance and use that along with our hand position as two of the four parameters needed for the Bezier quadratic equation. The third point we required was the curve point, which I basically define as an anchor point that would cause the boomerang to return at a bend back to the player. And finally, we needed to track the time since the last frame was drawn. After all the effort put in, I have to say the end result was really rewarding. Now although the boomerang looked like a lot of fun throwing it and catching it, and it was, I wanted it to be able to interact with the environment. So I set up a separate collision script which basically triggered some events depending on the object hit. First, if the boomerang hit a robot enemy in one of the limbs, I had it pass the collision to our dismemberment script and dismember the game object attached to the collider that we hit. If you want to see how that works, you can check it out in my last devlog video. Secondly, if the boomerang hit any metallic object, I also added some sound effects that would trigger using our audio manager that we had set up previously. Now I had to do some tweaking around with the boomerang script because currently the boomerang would return only when we passed a certain point. I added a boolean to trigger the boomerang to return if we hit an object. However, I did add some delay to the return using I enumerators so that we get some physics behavior before the boomerang returns and this helps us hit multiple objects and this was the end result. I'm still not quite happy with how the boomerang behaves after we hit an object. I may have a separate return method instead of using the Bezier curve, 
as it does give me a bit of delayed return when we hit an object, but something to work on for future videos. Finally, the last step was adding some visual effects to the boomerang to make it more, well, visually appealing. I had a lot of fun using visual effects graph in my Pokemon remake project previously, so I repeated that for this game. With that said, I had never made a sort of boomerang swoosh effect, if that's the correct terminology for it. Thankfully, I've been following a YouTuber called Gabriel who had a great tutorial for a great sword VFX. I followed this tutorial because it more or less had the style I was looking for, although I did have to make a few tweaks for the boomerang. If you're looking to learn how to make visual effects for your games, I highly recommend checking him out. He has some great videos and I've done some of his courses in the past and they were definitely helpful. Next, I set up the VFX by adding it as a child to the boomerang and simply setting it on and off when the boomerang is thrown through my boomerang throw and catch functions. This was the end result. And that's the end of this devlog guys, I really had a lot of fun developing and programming the boomerang and I think it will make for a lot of interesting and engaging gameplay for the player. Moving forward I have some ideas for additional mechanics like puzzle solving that can be done with the boomerang and abilities that the player could gain at certain points in the game. I'll also keep working on the boomerang and tweaking the core mechanics to try and improve the feel of the boomerang. You may have also noticed that I came up with a name for the game in the previous videos titled The Ark. Moving forward, I am going to be changing this because I feel it doesn't suit the direction that we're headed for with this game. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you enjoyed the video with a like or if you didn't with a dislike and feel free to drop a comment with your thoughts and feedback below. Also subscribe and hit the notification icon to stay posted on the game progression as well as my other projects. I am currently working on another mini game remake which will form my next video so stay tuned for that. As always guys, drink some coffee, code, and I will catch you in the next video.